Of course, the bridge collapse will have massive implication on Baltimore and even Maryland's economy. Yeah, the Port of Baltimore is a major economic force in the region, but the ship traffic in and out of the port has been suspended until further notice. Our Matthew Torres is live near the Port of Baltimore, speaking to economists and union leaders on you know what this all means for workers and the overall economy. There's a lot of people very worried at this point, Matthew. Well, to think just last month, Governor Wes Moore celebrated a record breaking year for the port, bringing in more than 52 million tons of foreign cargo valued at more than $80 billion in 2023. But tonight, after this bridge collapse, an economist tells me that Maryland could face a financial emergency. As one of the leading cargo ports on the East Coast and the busiest for car shipments in the country, the Port of Baltimore is facing an uphill challenge. Tonight, the shipping channel is suspended until further notice after the key bridge collapsed. The economic impact to the state of Maryland and the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area is going to be very, very grave. Scott Cowan of the International Longshoremen's Association, Local 333, says most of the cargo that comes through here directly serves our region. He's concerned about the 2,400 workers he represents who now have to wait and see. The port generates more than 15,000 jobs. Our longshoremen are hired on a daily basis. Their jobs are not guaranteed. So when there's no ships here, no cargo, there's no work. So it, it affects us greatly. Arguably, our number one economic development asset has been compromised. And this was a region that was already weak economically, so this is a real issue. And so the negative economic impacts are going to be millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars perhaps each day. This economist from Baltimore says since the port is a major handler of vehicles and raw materials such as coal, we could see prices go up. General Motors and Ford have already rerouted shipments. GM says to expect minimal disruption, but while cargo like cars and tractors are sure to come back, competition from other ports could have an impact. Some of this containerized cargo, I fear, is not going to come back to Baltimore because there are going to be new protocols, new standard operating procedures, new investments made at these other ports to handle this new cargo. And so as a result, Baltimore's loss could be long term and permanent as opposed to merely short term. And expect delays for truck drivers who normally rely on the bridge. It's going to group the whole world up. It's going to have to go around and all that and everything else. It's just going to time and everything else. But tonight, despite concerns, this union leader is hopeful operations will return sooner than later. If they can get the, the large pieces and the large stuff out of there and get cleared by the Army Corps engineers, we can be opened up for business for quickly. Now, for those familiar with the area, there are also war warehouses for Amazon and Under Armour nearby. I did reach out to Amazon. A spokesperson sent me a statement saying they're assessing the impacts, whether that's immediate or future, on the delivery uh, services as well as their employees, and they will make assessments, any changes necessary. Uh, also, we did reach out to the Port Administration to see their thoughts on the possible impact on the economy. We have yet to hear back. Guys. Matthew Torres, we understand that the state of Maryland looking at a $761 million budget shortfall for fiscal year 2025. So I'd imagine that there is a sort of economic pressure to get this bridge back up in working order and to get business back to usual as well. Well, I think back to Senator Ben Cardin, who said during one of those press conferences, it is critically important to the economy. To your point, right. Larry and Matthew, to open those channels back up. Matthew Torres reporting for us tonight. Thank you. And make sure.